Welcome to another special edition of Why Blank Lost, as we discuss Episode 9 of Survivor Micronesia, Fans vs. Favorites, and the merge vote against Eliza. I'm David Bloomberg, and with me as always in this RHAP off-season journey through time is my co-host, Jessica Lewis. Hello again, and thank you so much for traveling back through time with us. I have to say, this was another one of those fun weeks for me, because I mm -hmm. really did enjoy the season. Some weeks have been... Mm, okay, but this was enjoyable yeah. and probably because I got to revisit players that we had seen previously in the, you know, fa favorite sides. So it was, it was definitely, it was a good time. I enjoyed it. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that this episode was picked because of the effing stick, but mm -hmm. yeah, watching the season leading up to this point, which just as a reminder, we are still watching every episode to get up yes. to the point we are. Mm -hmm. Um, there was so much I'd forgotten, things I hadn't noticed in my original watch because I didn't know the ending. Like, for example, Parvati had a winner's quote in the first half of the episode. Yes, the, she the did. first half of the first episode. And she even had an explanation of what she intended to do and how she intended to play. And we later saw her do exactly that. Mm -hmm. it's, it is very interesting when you watch knowing what the end result is going mm -hmm. to be because you do pay attention differently. That's for sure. Right, right. Uh, also, I had no recollection whatsoever that Eric Reichenbach came up with the merge tribe name of Dabu, which he said means good in Micronesian, but he just made it up. Uh, he, he was trying to get him to name the tribe for shizzle. Uh, but, um, you know, and now I understand the name he uses for his artwork, Dabu Doodles. Right. It makes yeah. so much more sense. It's right, uh, you know, right, right there. Right on our poster. That's yeah. right. Yes. And, and it's also quite funny that he acted like it meant something that it actually right. didn't in order to get them to choose it, which I think is great. I just yeah. love that that forward thinking that he that he displayed and really had him convinced it meant something and it truly yeah. meant nothing. <laughs> yeah. Now, you know, speaking of Eric's artwork, you mentioned our poster, and, you know, because we talk about his artwork literally mm -hmm. every week because we he was the draw one who drew the survivor rules in poster form which of course anyone can get at tinyurl.com slash David Rules Poster 2. Yes, and here I'll show the, without the, here we go. There, there it is. And I will yeah. say I did have the pleasure of meeting him when we went to Florida for Hearts of Reality. And it mm -hmm. was quite nice to actually not just chat with him on the phone, but actually get to interact with him. Wonderful guy, incredibly talented. And I appreciate even more all of his fancy ways that he was drawing people's names when he would vote them out. <laughs> so mm -hmm. it was that much more fun to watch because I saw the artistic side of him coming through just even in his tribal council voting. Yes. Now, uh, Vanna White, can you please hold up that poster again? Oh, yes. Uh, would you because, like me to do that? Yes. Uh, at, that's perfect because if you look at rule number one, scheme and plot, that is the Black Widow Brigade from this season. Right? I know. Isn't so, it so much fun? Yes, yeah. I have no idea why he would draw them all as witches. You know, why <laughs> Eric Reichenbach would I know. draw those women as witches as if they had done something to him. I know, that poor guy. It really is sad. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, we also, of course, besides the poster, we have uh, another way you can get the rules and Eric's artwork. So you can always have them with him, with you. You can wear them because... They're in t-shirt form, mm -hmm. and I'm wearing this in honor of Eric. I should have um, worn mine today. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so just go to robhasawebsite.com or robhasapodcast.com. Click the merch link near the top. Uh, sort the store so new items are first, and poof, the t-shirts will be there. Yes, and they really are great purchases. I mean, not only because you are supporting our podcast, but you're supporting... Rob has a podcast and, and all of the incredible work that he does. So you should definitely order and join, join into the fun. It's all good yeah. times. Now, of course, these rules, the ones there, the ones here, um, are shortened versions of the ones we use each week, week, the each week, each week <laughs> to determine how a player did. And you can check out the most recent version of those rules at Rob has a website.com slash blog slash survivor rules. Normally we're talking, uh, you know, uh, during the season, we talk about the current season, but of course, in this journey back through time, we've been doing it for selected players from years ago in situations like this one. It gives us the opportunity to not only look at the secret scenes and interviews, including like in this case, ones that I conducted, but also compare my Either. thoughts from the time to no, it's using all available information. 
Uh, also, comparing my thoughts from the time to thoughts now, since I do look back at my old Reality News Online articles to see what I thought as things were airing. Um, this time pretty much ended up at the same place I was last time, but it was more amusing. I was looking at some of the other articles that some of my other writers had written at this time. Mm -hmm. And the, the woman who wrote the Missing Intelligence Award weekly column gave it to Parvati this week. Oh, interesting. And so uh, that column didn't age well. No, it did not age well. <laughs> I mean, I can understand some of the concerns because there were things and I'm sure we'll discuss mm -hmm. that. I don't want to jump ahead as to, you know, whether or not this was the right decision at this time, but we'll get there. We'll definitely. Get I think there. that she mostly gave it to her because she signed Amanda up for all these different alliances without telling her about it. Yeah. That, that was a which, bold move on Parvati. Which part for ended sure. up yeah, kind of working for Parvati. Oh, so, it absolutely um, worked out for her. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, uh, besides that, before we get to the rules, as usual, we have a, a few things to discuss, um, or at least things that I want to discuss. <laughs> to start, Yao Man is one of my favorite players ever. Johnny Fairplay, one of my least favorite players ever. So at the very beginning of the first episode, getting to see Yao Man tackle Fairplay and smack his head into a boat as Ooh. they're fighting over an idol, that was glorious. That was very aggressive. That was very was. aggressive. And you know what I think is interesting, too? And I, maybe I'm reading too much into this, but the fact that Yao Man got so much response from the fans when he walked in and Jeff even pointed out the fact mm -hmm. that that was the loudest response that has any favorite has received up to that point. I I'm curious if that had any effect on Suri's big push to mm. have him leave, because clearly they liked him. You know, he was yeah. clearly a favorite because I do think some of the favorites that were chosen were picked as favorites for not favorite reasons. <laughs> they were picked for different reasons yeah. where someone like Yao Man was just really, really liked. And I'm curious if that had anything to do with Suri really pushing that. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Cause some of the fans that were chosen were not really fans. So I <laughs> noticed that too. Yeah. Yeah. It's as much as uh, much as Jeff Probst harped on that, I remember making a deal of that over the seat at, at the time. It's like mm. this person is not really a fan. But yeah. anyway, um, so uh, speaking of uh, people getting smacked around, you know, going back to Yao Man and and uh, uh, Fair Play, we've talked before about how the challenges on earlier seasons were more physical. And in this season, there were several that were just brutal with uh, tackling mm -hmm. and throwing people around. And you know, in the fifth episode reward challenge, there were at least three separate injuries. Parvati got a nice, huge fat lip. Mm -hmm. uh, Amy twisted her knee and Penner, you know, puncturing his knee. Almost uh, killed would, himself. Yeah, which would lead to his medevac after we got multiple close-ups of the doctor working mm -hmm. on it. Mm -hmm. and, and not just close-ups at the time, but like the following episode, it was like last week on Survivor. Look at this really gross thing. It's like, oh, stop <laughs> it. Ew. But um, that just goes to show that this is real. And I know that oh, a lot mm. of people question sometimes, is that, does that all really happen? Yes, it really does happen. People really get injured. And I know at least on my season, there was quite a few injuries that you didn't get to see close up, but I did. And they were really disgusting. So it does happen. Absolutely. 100%. Those doctors are there for a reason because people are legit hurting themselves. Yeah. And then you had, uh, and then you have some people hurting others like Joel dragging poor Chet all over the place, smacking his oh head, you know, him into obstacles. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, Chet says at the end, he hit his head and Joel's like, I don't care. And Chet says, <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> that you know, was I, a whole strange I, dynamic. And oh, here's yeah. my question. Okay. Since we're talking about this, I just want to know, how they chose who was going to be running with who, because mm -hmm. I know that sometimes they pick rocks and you get numbers as to who's going against who, but I feel like some of the matchups just really didn't make any sense and why they were putting people together that they were. Mm -hmm. It seemed almost like if production was involved or if it was random or what, I, it, really, I, it, it definitely seemed like people were getting paired up like those two despised each other. And the fact that yeah. Joel had to drag Chet around certainly helped the storyline, but didn't help their relationship at all. Oh, well, there were, yeah, I mean, and let's face facts. Joel's an a-hole. Um, mm. 
<laughs> at least he was a little was. aggressive. He, we, uh, he was an a hole. Um, you know, but after all these injuries, I can see, you know, we talk about they used to be this way. They used to be this way. I think I can see why they stopped. Yeah. Well, we didn't even address the one where they almost made people drown. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the practically drowning challenge. Throwing, throwing people around. I mean, yeah. like Amanda got thrown over someone's mm-hmm. shoulder. and Yeah. No, that one, so. that was also very aggressive as well, where they were yeah. essentially drowning. But yeah. I do still feel like. I miss some of those challenges just because they are fun to watch. They are brutal, but definitely entertaining. Yeah. Yeah. Better than. Then, well, you know, yeah. So I don't know. Did you have anything else you wanted to talk about before we uh, get to this episode? You know what I'm going to talk about. James. <laughs> I did not know what you were going to. Talk I got about. to watch James again. And I, oh, that, true. I'm telling you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait. And I'm going to back up here because. I just love James. There's just something about the way he just presents himself the way he is. Mm -hmm. He's just an incredible human being. I've never gotten to meet him. I would love to, but I really appreciate watching James play survivor because he is probably one of the most honest players to ever play the game. He tells you exactly what he's thinking, (laughs) but he does it in a way that's like, Oh, okay. You know, it's it's not like he's being mean. He's just being honest. Like yeah, this is what it is. You guys are a bunch of knuckleheads. You guys yeah, are a bunch it, of knuckleheads. But it's know? great. I mean, it's really great. He doesn't it would and he did this to Eliza. I mean, he was talking about Eliza in front of Eliza about yeah. how she's sick and we should have just voted you out. And she's like, <laughs> I'm right here. He goes, I know you are. I know. <laughs> like it doesn't even phase him because he's really just like that's the way he is. And I love that about him. In addition to the fact that he is just incredibly strong and just obliterates every challenge he's in. Mm-hmm. So I appreciate that a lot. But I also forgot just how physical Ozzy and Amanda got on this. Like I I had no recollection that there was like some full on like stuff happening very early on in the season Little completely <laughs> i completely forgot about that and i was pretty grossed out i will <laughs> say because i have been on an island with very unclean you're not brushing your teeth like there are certain things you just might not want to delve into in that situation so i was watching that just kind of going ew like Ew. But anyway, that was I forgot. Love that that conquers all or lust. One of the two Oof, that you got. Yeah. There's got to be a whole lot of something happening because that's yeah. gross. I that was that was a lot. That was a lot to watch. So I did appreciate, though, the watching Penner and Suri like react to it as well. Like mm-hmm. that was definitely entertaining as well because of the way that they were responding to it. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you know, the season gave us three quits and a medevac. Right. And several of them were absolutely game changing. And we'll talk about them some more as we go through the rules. But the game would have been so much different if Fair Play and Chet hadn't quit when they did. And if Penner mm-hmm. hadn't been pulled. Right. So much different. Oh, for sure. And I, I it's one of those situations, too, that I find very interesting that 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 whole question as to whether or not Johnny Fair Play quit. Was it a quit? Was it not a quit? That was a quit. It was, that a, was, quit. It was a quit. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. High five. <laughs> here we go. Here, wait. I gotta go. Yeah, yeah. I gotta go this way. Okay. <laughs> we didn't do it very. We'll have to practice that. We'll practice. Yeah, that okay. Move. Yeah. We'll practice the high five move. Yes. Uh, but once you know, once we got to the merge episode here, uh, there was never really any doubt about who's going to get booted. Uh, the show tried to make a little bit seemed like there was a chance Alexis might go because she was cuddling up to Ozzy, you know, uh, but we all know that was never going to happen. Mm. Uh, there, this, this was a straight up episode where we watch people as they think they have a chance, but we know they don't. Um, the question that we have to answer, of course, is what happened to put Eliza into this position? How much of her fate was due to bad luck and how much was related to her personality or his just her strategic attempts? Was there anything more she could have done to change it? Time to once again figure out why Eliza lost. 
The first and most important rule, which of course is shown by the Black Widows, uh, is to scheme and plot. And Eliza certainly knew that. She pulled together an alliance of four on day two with Amy, Penner, and Yao Man. Uh, plus the idea was to bring in Sari. Uh, meanwhile, Parvati and Ozzy immediately wanted Eliza out because Eliza said she was shifty and crafty and they couldn't trust her and parvati <laughs> said that she didn't want eliza snaking her uh but the couples brought johnny fairplay into their alliance and then fairplay immediately told eliza and company what was going on uh making it look like he would have sided with eliza's alliance before he ran away and quit the game uh, i know as eliza told me in our interview at the time I made an alliance with people I thought I could trust, people I thought who were similar to me, smart and good game players, and maybe not the biggest challenge threats in terms of individual immunity to go to the end with. Then Fair Play went and Sari went to the Showman's Alliance and I found myself in trouble. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that there wasn't more of a push to try to get Sari on their side. I feel like she was kind of left out there for a while. We had four and four, and then you had johnny Fairplay kind of slithering through both sides but i feel like nobody really like went after sari as much as i would have expected because sari is a type of individual that i think gelled more with the penners of the mm -hmm. of the game as opposed to you know the aussies and the parvities but for whatever reason that was where she decided to go and i don't know if it was because people left her out there so long to make the decision herself as opposed to really giving her a reason to choose this side as opposed to that side. So I thought that was a, a miscalculation on Eliza's part along with the group of people that she was with because I do feel like that could have been a different play. But I have already mentioned how Sari was really against Yao Man like sticking around. So maybe right. that was also part of the reason why she didn't want to decide to go with that group. But I feel like some someone should have pushed that a little bit more. Yeah, and it's possible they did, and we don't know because later right. we'll talk about that. Eliza did feel like she was close with Suri, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I remember watching this live. I wanted nothing more than an alliance with Yao Man and Suri, and instead they were butting heads and going right. against each other, and I hated it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, but I do think that that just goes to show the type of player Suri is. I think Suri is very aware of what other people bring to the table and she knows what's going to work best for her. And I think that someone like Yao Man, she realizes is a very likable person and someone that people want to form a bond with. And that's her role. That's mm -hmm. who she is. And so I think perhaps that was part of her reasoning. And we need to vote him out first, not just because he can find idols anywhere, but also because he has this ability to connect with people and clearly the fans liked him. And so I'm, I'm thinking that that was probably part of it. And maybe Suri was looking at the benefits that came with Ozzy and James. We're going to win challenges. And, and if they're on my side, then I've got that brawn with me as opposed to against me. So there's a lot that goes into it for sure. But I, I do think that obviously Eliza did very well in trying to read the room and figure out who was going to play best with her. And I had forgotten completely that she and Amy actually played together already. Like oh, yeah. I didn't realize that until I started going back through and I was like, Oh, okay. So clearly there was a previous relationship there. So yep. good for her for trying to utilize that too. Yeah. And I think another reason that Suri went with the showman's Alliance, I think if fair play had stayed and they had the clear majority, there's no way she would have flipped and, you know, made it five, five. Mm -hmm, she just right. wouldn't have done it. But right. then fair play quitting was one of those moments that I alluded to earlier that, you know, potentially changed the game in a huge mm -hmm. way yeah. because Parvati was the Alliance of Eliza's group. If fair play had gone with that group and Sari probably would have gone with them. Parvati could easily have been the first one out instead of the winner. Oh yeah. It's crazy to think about that. That's, that was the other option was the person who ends up winning in the end. Obviously, originally you don't know that, but we know that now. Right. Right. So I, I so again, Eliza was looking at a target that made sense because now we know how it ended up, you know, where mm -hmm. the, you know, where the season found itself was poverty winning. And so I do think that Eliza had a good read on that as well as to how Harvardy was going to play the game and how she was very good at playing the game because she's good at forging relationships and all of those right. things that Eliza was very concerned about.
Yeah. And, you know, once Eliza lost those two allies, she told me in an interview that she realized it was going to be like Vanuatu all over again, and she needed to survive week to week and wait until the next stage of the game. Uh, Ozzy and company were set on wanting Eliza out, not just for the first episode, but again and again and mm-hmm. again. Um, on day 12, she was told by her tribe, you're going home if we lose an immunity challenge. If we lose, you're done. And, you know, she just kept hearing basically that same tune over and over again. Yeah. And I think it's a really difficult spot for someone to be in when they're immediately at the bottom to -hmm. start. And then the game does throw all of these curveballs your way as well, because your ability to try to finagle your way out of it becomes more and more limited. And that's what I think we saw happening with Eliza is everything that could have potentially gone wrong for her game. In addition to people wanting to vote her out happened in her game. Yeah. And and then the next step was, you know, she told Penner in the sixth episode she was given new life by the swap. Her plan was to get to know the know the fans in the tribe and work with Penner to get them to vote out Parvati and James before the merge so they couldn't get back together with Amanda and Ozzy. And it was a good p- plan. But Penner's knee injury got in the way. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we didn't see on TV was that Eliza had followed through and made an alliance with the fans. She told me when Jonathan was there, it was a very solid alliance. And they had even planned to possibly throw an immunity challenge at one point to get rid of Parvati. Uh, But then Penner left uh, and she believes if Penner had stayed Alexa, uh, uh, Alexis and Natalie would have absolutely stayed with them. But once Penner was medevaced, Natalie and Alexis told her, sorry, we got a better offer from Parvati and we're taking it. Right. And Parvati also came with other people. I mean, at that point, right. Eliza's yeah, other other person. Off. Yeah. I mean, Eliza's other person, Penner, is now gone. And so you mm-hmm. have to start looking at the numbers and where are we going to have the most votes falling our way? And so they made a decision to shift that direction. And so, again, I do think that this is something that Eliza had to deal with. And unfortunately, you know, something like a medevac, you can't I mean, you can't do anything about if if the guy's got to go, he's got to go. I mean, he, he was potentially going to die if he stayed. Yeah. So it makes sense. But also it's really detrimental to someone's game. Someone like Eliza, who was close with him. And I do think that if that had not been the issue, if he hadn't had been asked to leave or been told he had to leave. Yeah, things would have definitely turned out much different. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of Aubrey, you know, just Aubrey makes an alliance and then someone has to go and they get kicked mm-hmm. off. They get, you yeah. know, they get medevac, they get whatever. Um, you know, and Eliza kept Jason as an ally, which I think was one reason that Natalie and Alexis didn't want to be with her anymore because mm. they didn't like Jason. Uh, you know, so he he had nobody else with him and he didn't know an immunity idol from a stick in the ground. Oh, my God. Uh, so. Literally. Literally. Yeah. yeah. As I said in my original Why Eliza Lost column, it seems proper to say Eliza tried to scheme and plot, but kept hitting dead ends. Yeah. No, I think that's a fair point because she really did. So the second rule says not to scheme and plot too much and to keep your scheming secret. Now, it might seem at first like Eliza didn't do well in this rule because she was busted for trying to get rid of poverty Mm -hmm. and then trying to come back to claim loyalty after the merge. But the more I thought about it, and this was one of those things, like I thought about it at the time and came to this conclusion. And then I put together my notes and I I put together all my thoughts. And then I go back and look to see what I said. And I did the same process this, you know, the second time too. I, I can't really criticize her because she was doing what she should have been doing in trying to target a member, member of the opposition. And Parvati was targeting Eliza back. Mm -hmm. So if, if Eliza's alliance had held steady instead of collapsing multiple times due to the quit and the medevac, none of it would have mattered. And we might've been saying this about Parvati instead, but right. it, you know, it does bear noting that when Parvati called out Eliza in the tribal council for having targeted her right off the bat and then trying to act like they could be loyal to each other, Eliza first denied it and then told Jeff, I definitely got myself into this mess. Right. But I do think that, it's interesting that they were both targeting each other right off the bat. And I do think that this is part of that 
prior game knowledge coming through. You know right. how the people played their games previously. And so this becomes part of your determining factor as to who you're going to target. And I think both of them looked at each other and saw that they were a threat to their own game. And so then we need to target that individual. And unfortunately for Eliza, I think that, and we're going to get there, but as far as having an ability to really win people over and make friends, I think was harder for Eliza than it was for someone like Parvati. And so I think it was easier for Parvati to really glom onto people and have them listen to her as opposed to Eliza having to work a little more hard to get there, trying to do it strategically and reminding people why this person should be targeted as, as opposed to someone you just get along with better. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I think the main problem in this rule was the part that says you have to keep your scheming secret. Mm -hmm. it, it would have been fine if Parvati hadn't found out that Eliza was targeting her, but she kept hearing it from people who had been on Eliza's side, but then flipped First, Sari had been on the anti Parvati plan and then joined with Parvati. Then the same thing happened with Alexis and Natalie. Eliza trusted her allies to keep information secret, but mm -hmm. then they jumped ship and shared all that information for their own benefit. Right. And, and Eliza told me that she spent a lot of time talking to Sari on her final day there, trying to make any inroads. But Sari said the fans told them everything, including that you know, the, the part about maybe even throwing a challenge. Sari told her, you are playing too many people and there isn't anybody who trusts you here. Yeah. And I do think that this goes back to that idea of almost planting seeds as opposed to telling people what they should mm -hmm. do. You know, instead of giving people the name of who should be voted out or telling them we should vote this person out, there needs to be more of a discussion as opposed to this is what we should do is right. let's talk about what our options are. Let's talk about what strengths this person has or, or how is this person going to negatively affect our game? And that might've worked better for Eliza because I do think that she was a little more forward. And especially when you're playing with people who have never played the game before, they might not understand the nuances of it all where you aren't necessarily supposed to spill the beans because then you're telling everybody what's happening and then they can shift and move and things can change. And obviously that's exactly what we saw happen this season is the fans kind of had diarrhea of the mouth and shared a lot of information. And then what did the favorites do? They switched it up and they, yeah. they, you know, did, did things that were better for their own game as opposed to the fans games. And so I do think that you were, you've got a couple of, of things working against Eliza. You've got people who don't understand all of those nuances and then you have favorites who do and all of it just came to a head and she found herself in a really difficult situation, but she did yeah. put herself there. Yeah. I mean, the one thing I'll say is she needed to create an early alliance mm -hmm. and she needed to create a swap tribe alliance and she did both. Yep. It, it wasn't a situation where she was scheming with a whole bunch of different people and got caught. She was strategizing with people she thought were allies. Mm -hmm. And yes. so that makes it more difficult to criticize in this particular rule. For sure. Yes. And I do think that it's it's one of the situations where everyone was kind of taking the information that they were being provided and deciding what they wanted to do with it. And maybe the fans thought it would be better to go over and tell Suri everything right. that was happening not really realizing that that's going to be to their detriment too later. Yeah. All right. The third rule talks about being flexible. And I would say Eliza was kind of forced to be flexible mm. uh, because nothing was going her way, as we said. Um, but little of that flexibility mattered or helped her. She was willing to align herself with whomever she needed in order to survive, but it didn't matter. Uh, as just one example in the third episode, uh, Eliza saw that Suri was voting with the couples, so she joined them in voting out Yao Man, uh, apparently not realizing that she was the target they really wanted, and it, she wasn't going to earn any gold stars by joining them this way. Yeah, I, it's a, almost like a little too late at that point, because they right. already have you in their sights. They've already decided that you're against them, you know, that Eliza was trying to target one of their own. And so at that point, you're really not going to gain any favors. Yeah. So, yeah, we can move on to the fourth rule, which tells players not to let their emotions control them. Now, in her first time out, it's safe to say that Eliza made at least a few emotional moves. What do you think about this time? 
I think she tried to keep it in check because I do think that she realized her faults the first time she played. And she was kind of seen as a little more emotional in some of the responses that she had. Unfortunately for Eliza, I think a lot of things come in her face. And so you you can't necessarily hide. I don't know how you can say that. You can't hide the Eliza eyes. I know I have those too. So, you know, it's one of those situations where I think she tried to keep it in check this time and tried to be reasonable in the, in why she was doing things, you know, that this, this decision makes sense because of X, Y, and Z, as opposed to, I want to vote this person out just because I'm not getting along with them. I mean, she was really put in some very uncomfortable situations where she could have lost it you know she could have Mm -hmm. really let her emotional her emotions take over and we already talked about james and how he basically was like we should have voted you out first and she kept that in check so i think she learned from her previous season to keep her emotions in check but i think it's really hard at the same time when you find yourself constantly in a situation like eliza was in where she's on the outs and all of the potential saviors that were around her keep disappearing you know uh, people are quitting they're you know getting medevaced and and so she's losing all of those footholds that she had so i think it becomes more difficult to keep that that part of you contained yeah i uh, eliza did tell me that she thought she did better in this area and i agree uh she said i don't think my dislike of anyone out there impaired my gameplay there was nobody out there who i was so blinded by hatred of that i couldn't see myself in alliance with so yeah I, i don't think she had that problem right Uh, The fifth rule, though, does address where we get to some problems, uh, because that talks about the social game and says to uh, pretend to be nice. When Alexis was asked about Eliza's skills in in tribal council, she said Eliza played an incredible mental and physical game, but not so much for the social game. Now, of course, this was especially amusing because she was using the past tense already Mm -hmm. while Eliza was sitting there next to her, as, as Jeff pointed out. But her assessment is really the point I'm making here. Eliza herself said that her, quote, social game potentially has been lacking. Uh, And then after a bit more conversation and one of these and eye roll, um, Jeff asked if she was liked. And she said, no, not really. I'm not really liked. Uh, She later she later said everybody should bring people that people don't like to the end with you and have a shot basically saying flat out that people didn't like her well and this is again why i love james because what did james say in response to that that's the name of survivor right isn't that isn't that the name of the game game? you you bring the people to the end that other people don't like (laughs) so kudos to her for trying to use that as a strategy to keep Mm -hmm. her around because i do think that it is true i mean if you can bring people to the end that there, there's disdain for mm-hmm. that people just really don't care for. I mean, we've talked about this a lot that sometimes you get voted for because people like you over the person you're sitting next to, regardless of how you played the game. If you, mm-hmm. if you were close, like, Oh, they close in strategy, close in, in how they played. Well, I'd like that person more. So I'm going to vote for them because I'd rather right. give them a million dollars than someone else. And so it is, it is certainly a fair argument for her to be making that perhaps you should keep me around because people don't like me and if you bring me to the end i'm not gonna win and it's it's crappy to have to say that i think but she tried she definitely tried yeah now eliza said in her day after video that in real life she makes a lot of friends but when she goes on survivor she can't find people she relates well to Uh, she added that she loves the game but she doesn't like having to pretend to like certain people or care about what they're talking about (laughs) It drove her crazy to have to listen to people going on about facials and spa treatments and colonics. She said she has nothing in common with those people. Uh, and, and it's it's kind of funny that she talked about having to listen to other people because when I interviewed her, I recalled that in her first time around, she told her mother that other players found her talkative and annoying and asked if you know, she tried to do anything this time to overcome that. Uh, she did say she tried to talk a little less and be friendly with everyone, but you know she thought she wasn't as annoying as the first time. Uh, and then she said, but you know, I think I'm just a little intense for people, for some people. Well, and I do think that this is one of those points we've made before that 
there are certain parts of you that you got to have to check at the door when you play the game of Survivor. You just there, you know, qualities about yourself like, OK, I can't do that when I'm out mm-hmm. on the island. And then there are other parts of you that you really can't check at the door because that's just who you are. And if your personality comes across as a little more intense or a little more strong, you can try to rein it in a little bit. And I do think that she did a better job this time than her first time through in doing so. But I also feel like that's kind of who she is. And so it was difficult for her to probably keep that in check. And on top of it, you have the perception of her from the first time she played. So even if she was keeping it in check and acting more sociable and and trying to to build relationships with people and wanting to be friendly and wanting to be nice, there's that little thing in the back of everyone's mind who says, well, I saw her play that game before and that's not who she was. And I didn't I didn't like her before. I thought she was annoying. I thought she was too intense before that Eliza is going to come out again. And and so I do think that, you know, this is one of the situations that she was probably up against that even though she was trying to keep it in check, it it was almost like her story had already been written because I'd already seen it. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of having already seen it, that's a good seg into rule six, which warns against being too much of a threat because it seems like she came with a threat label right there on her forehead from Mm -hmm. her first season. Uh, She told me, you even saw that the first day Parvati saying she didn't want to get fooled by me because that was how I was shown in Vanuatu. I had trouble getting people to trust me, even though I felt that Yao Man and Amy and Jonathan trusted me. Right. Yeah, I do think that, again, this is one of those situations returning players deal with. And you have to figure out how to kind of pull that threat back. And someone like Eliza probably didn't do a great job of doing that because she was struggling with the social component of it. So then you struggle with the ability to make yourself just likable and people appreciate having you around. Instead, they focus on all of the things that make you a problem for their own game, which is exactly what Parvati was doing. And unfortunately for Eliza she found herself being the immediate target of a group of four and then a potential swing five. And so it's one of those situations that became very hard for her to maneuver away from considering all of the other things that happened in the game. Yeah. And then her threat level just kept going up as the game went on. She was an immediate and ongoing threat to Parvati and Parvati knew it. Mm -hmm. Uh, The worst part was the Parvati was the core person in the middle of pretty much all the alliances. Yes. She, she had a total of eight people involved one way or the other. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that does explain how, uh, you know, helps to explain why Parvati was able to win. Mm-hmm. But it also shows how Eliza didn't stand a chance once she got on Parvati's bad side, which was right away. Yes, mm-hmm, for sure. And Parvati is very good with the social game. Yes. So you're, you're up against someone whose strength is everything that Eliza struggled with. And so it's just only going to compound itself. Yeah. All right. Moving to the seventh rule, it deals with how to handle immunity idols and advantages. Of course, we know all about the so-called idol here. Uh, Ozzy replaced the real idol with a stick in episode four saying that he was taking a page out of Yao man's book, but his creative skills were not exactly of the highest order. Um, as a matter of fact, I have my own. Uh, this is, <laughs> there you go. This, I put about as much work into David. creating this fake idol as Ozzy put into his. That's just an effing stick, David. No, this is an idol. It has a face on it. I don't know where you, you would find see? a post-it now out on the island. But it it's... doesn't matter. It, it's it, it it's an it's it's an idol. Mm, I so, was it wrapped in a napkin too? Sure, sure. <laughs> yeah, we'll just. <laughs> oh, that's um, perfect. That's yes. a good look. <laughs> so, um, oh so you know, God. Jason Jason fell for it completely, leading Eliza to believe that she would be safe. Uh, Jason was even crowing about how great it would be to send Ozzy's cocky oh ass God, home tonight. I know, I know. Uh, but, you know, the moment Eliza unwrapped the so-called idol, she knew it was bogus. And she also immediately figured out that Ozzy must have been the, the one who had the real one and put the fake one there. Uh, so we, of course, get her quote, it's an effing stick. But, of course, she didn't say effing. No, she didn't. And you know what? I really wish that Jason hadn't been so blinded by this because I do think that if he had 
thought for more than five seconds that he found the idol and that that mm -hmm. was it and just accepted it, that that was it, that perhaps Eliza could have done something different. I mean, she said in a lot of her exit press that she had a plan if that wasn't right. going to work out, but she put so much faith in the fact that he had the idol and that he won immunity. So it was like, it was like all of these perfect things lined up, but she hadn't seen the idol yet. And that was the one part yeah. of it that I think is really frustrating is that he never showed it to her until like right before they were going to tribal council. And then all of a sudden you realize you have an effing stick. <laughs> so yeah. It's, yeah. I it's mean, going to be very crushing. Right. None of his uh, actions really have anything to do with her. She knew the stick was not the immunity idol. Right. The minute she saw it, but she had to play it because, mm -hmm. well, what if it was right. uh it, it was it was basically the same situation that adam would later find himself in with the fleur de lis at when in mm -hmm. winners of war uh and hmm, uh <coughs> sorry, it, it sorry. Just <laughs> um, so, your effing uh, stick fell off my, your glass uh, 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 um uh, uh, like that time you know jeff probst had some it's also shedding um uh, ha had some uh, uh, fun trolling people because the first thing he said, he, he got it and he said, well, the rules of survivor state that if any immunity idol is played, the votes against that person do not count. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he said, but this isn't an immunity. I know it it's so sad. It's so um, sad. But we yeah. know that it didn't get burned up in the fire either because didn't it make an appearance? Did it? I, I feel know. like I feel like it was discussed as to whether or not the effing stick was going to come back and it was on a producer's desk. I feel like if I'm mm. remembering correctly that they they managed to salvage it. So I don't think it showed mm -hmm. up again, but I do think it was salvaged okay. and taken out of the fire because that I know yes, it's right here <laughs> with the post-it note face. With I love it. Note, yes. uh, it. It went on a diet. It, it got much it clearly. Thinner. It clearly did get thinner. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's just a whole I mean, listen, I love the idea of, of a fake idol and people creating them and getting people to play them. It happened in my season. It was great to watch. Yes. But you need to be a little more creative in in how you make it. How can you be more I, creative than this? I mean, I understand you're limited, but I mean, come on. That <laughs> and the fact that Jason bought it, I still yeah, that's yeah. pretty pretty incredible. Yeah, now you did face. mention it yeah, had a face. It has a face. Do you not see the face? <laughs> I mean, you did mention that Eliza talked about, you know, that there were things she could have done uh, and maybe had an effect. Uh, she told me that if she had gotten Jason to give her the quote unquote idol uh, earlier in the day, she would have known the whole story ahead of time and she could have brought our, our friendly neighborhood stick to Sari and said that. Ozzy has the hidden immunity idol. Um, and, and, you know, Sari was her closest friend left. And she thinks that Sari would have made the case for blindsiding Ozzy. Uh, Sari later told uh, Eliza that, in fact, she would have been able to pull in Parvati, Natalie, Alexis, and they all could have blindsided him. Mm -hmm. But Eliza didn't have that opportunity to make that happen because she didn't get the stick from Jason sooner. Right. Right. Yeah. So it's one more like, Woulda, coulda, shoulda, if it had happened, things would have been right. so different. But for sure, it it didn't, unfortunately. Yeah. Now, the other thing I was thinking she could have done, and as you'll see, I, this probably wouldn't have worked. But if she had pulled out the wrapped, quote unquote, idol during tribal council, so not waiting to play it, pulled it out, explained that Jason found it and gave it to her and she was going to play it. Mm hmm. Now, this was, of course, in the days before Whisper, 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 getting yes. up and talking to each mm -hmm. other. So it would have been more difficult for Ozzy to counter this claim without straight up admitting, no, I have the real idol. I put the fake one there. That mm. is bogus. Mm -hmm. But it, I say that would be more difficult, but he had already told his core alliance. And it might not have been that big a deal for him to tell everyone else, especially since he readily admitted it when Eliza called him out after the stick was declared fake. So, but that was after the votes too, though. So if it right. had happened before people voted, there That's maybe true. we would have had that live tribal that we talk about that doesn't really exist, where <laughs> people would have started to think about it, like, okay, wait a second. So Ozzy's got the actual immunity idol, mm -hmm. and you know maybe Eliza could have tried to sway some people. I do think that would have been an interesting play. I like. Oh, that. it would have, yeah. 
Okay. Because we've seen people do that where they've pulled out an idol and put it over their neck. And mm -hmm. Jeff doesn't say for sure whether or not that is a you real idol. Put it, put it in your neck. Right. <laughs> you have to stab yourself with the stick. <laughs> um, you know, and I do I do think that it's interesting when we see when we see it happen like that, where someone takes out what they're claiming mm -hmm. to be an immunity idol. And Jeff doesn't say anything because it's not being played. But right but they act as if it is real. And so there's almost this idea that it is a real idol because nobody's saying it's not. So you pull it out and you show it. And in her case, obviously don't show the stick, but the, that it's wrapped in the paper. Mm -hmm. Maybe it could have worked. I think that would have been an interesting thing yeah. to see happen. Yeah. All right. We can move on to appendix a, which is about the rest of the tribe, keeping their end goals in mind when voting. And of course it says to vote out the weak, then the strong, then the weak, then the strong. Um, the merge is a key spot to vote out strong physical threats. And usually at this time in history, we would see people like an Ozzy or a Jason going throughout the tribal portion of the game. Eliza had been seen as a weaker competitor. Like you had talked about, she was sick. Uh, she thought she would be the next to go if they lost. Um, you know, then she was the last favorite picked in the swap pick them. Um, you know, but then she turned around and helped win the reward challenge by dragging Parvati around the course, much like Joel dragged uh, Chet, mm -hmm. um, though to less, you know, uh, fewer injuries, although right. there was that fat lip. Um, you know, and, and then she also helped her tribe win in the episode prior to the merge, probably saving herself then on that uh, course where they were th throwing bags at them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, she had moments of both strength and weakness. I do think, though, that this was a missed opportunity for other people on the tribe. I, I like what Eliza did by pointing out the fact that she was not liked and they mm -hmm. should keep her around just for that. Because not only is she not liked, it's one of those situations where n no one's working with her. So right. you don't need to worry about Eliza kind of getting together a group of people and really making things happen because she doesn't have the capabilities to do so. She's tried and tried and tried and it hasn't worked. So at that point, she's kind of just this lone person with maybe a Jason helping her. But in the long run, what kind of damage can she really do? Whereas if you have someone like Ozzy, James, Parvati and Amanda that are a group of four, they can cause a lot of damage because that's a group of four. And mm -hmm. so I do think that there was some power for Eliza trying to utilize her not being liked in an attempt to stay. And I don't think that the remaining tribe members really considered that at that time. And maybe it was because it was presented at tribal council and that was it. And people had to kind of make a decision right then and there. Right. Whereas that might've been a good play for her to do early on before they got to tribal council, just to remind everyone, this is a numbers game and I don't come with any numbers. So why am I such a threat to you at this point when I come with no numbers? Those people come with numbers. Yeah, I, I think the thing is they were concerned with her in the strategic realm, as we've been discussing. Hmm. And she was also the only one on the tribe available to be voted out who wasn't in one of Parvati's alliances. Right. Mm -hmm. There was literally no one else. It was her and Jason. Right. Yeah. So otherwise, and, it probably would have been Jason. Right. So, but he had immunity. So, right. yeah. Mm hmm. So. All right. Well, it's about time to wrap things up. What are your final thoughts that you would like to share with us? Well, I thought it was interesting listening to Eliza in some of her pregame interviews because she talked about how she had basically all three of the capabilities you need to win Survivor that she had, she thought, a great social game because she had the capabilities of getting people to know her, to trust her and to like her. And that she had athleticism and that she was very smart. She was good with puzzles. So she thought she had all three. She said a lot of people come in to play Survivor and they've got one or two of these, but I bring all three. And unfortunately for Eliza, I think she oversold herself on some of her capabilities, especially when it came to her social game. I do think that Eliza has all of those capabilities but in this particular situation we saw her struggle greatly with her social game and she came into this game with people already having an idea of who she was and how she was going to play this game and immediately found herself on the outs with the other half on her tribe that was 
one of the best social players we've ever seen. And so I think right off the bat, she was in a very difficult spot because she was going up against poverty and poverty already had formed a group. She was bringing people in and they were going to work together. They were going to stay together because they liked each other. And unfortunately, Eliza didn't have that. Eliza was focusing on strategy and why she wanted to align with people was more of a strategic decision as opposed to this guy's going to keep me warm and he's going to keep me fed. <laughs> he's going, you know, I mean, so it's a much different gameplay that we saw. And kudos to Parvati for pulling it off because she clearly does a great job with it. But unfortunately for Eliza, that's what she was up against. And so I do think that we saw Eliza come into this game knowing what she needed to correct from her previous play, but unfortunately was unable to do so with this group of people. And then in addition to that, Everything that could have gone wrong for her went wrong for her with people quitting, people be getting medevaced and things just really falling down a big old hole for her like an effing stick. You know, yeah. so I, I think everything that could have compiled up against her really did. And unfortunately for Eliza, there was too many things for her to overcome and she wasn't able to do so in the end. Yeah. <laughs> Eliza knew how to play Survivor. <laughs> And she even made no, I'm not gonna do it. She even made improvements in her game from her first time out there. Uh, but her first time out also haunted her because Parvati and Ozzy felt she was untrustworthy and a threat from the get-go. Eliza similarly felt that Parvati should be the prime target and told her allies this both on her original tribe and her swap tribe. The strategies were laid out and the plans were all there to get rid of Parvati. But then a series of unfortunate events occurred. Fair play quit. And while normally I would think this was a good outcome, it certainly wasn't good for Eliza because she needed him on her side. Uh, Parvati found out about to stick around to the swap and made new allies with another plan to oust Parvati. Then Penner was medevaced and her allies flipped again, telling Parvati all about Eliza's plans another time. Eliza schemed and plotted. Eliza was flexible. Eliza didn't let her emotions control her. She did annoy people, but she tried working on that. And I suspect part of the annoyance factor was simply that she was on the out strategically. And you know how it goes. Players almost always look at those people with disdain. If you're on the outs, then I have to be mad at you because that's how I, you know, get the, you know, you know, that's how I make my brain want to get rid of you. Um, Eliza had support and allies, but due to unforeseeable circumstances, they all left her one by one. Under different circumstances, Eliza could have been in a power position and Parvati could have been the first one out. Instead, Eliza was left standing virtually alone after having had her original plans exposed for all to see. She was a threat to those people, especially the one who was at the hub of everything. And Eliza was an easy target to pick off right after the merge. Eliza had one ally left and he had an idol or so he said <laughs> but it was just an effing stick an effing stick can't save you in this game and that is why eliza lost <laughs> but it has a face on it it has a face on it right there hello you should have gone out there with your little whittling knife and I couldn't find it thick enough. And and I thought about this 10 minutes before we started. So mm, that's why yeah. I said I put as much effort into this as as Ozzy put into as it. As Ozzy mm -hmm. did. But you at least had a post-it. Yes. Well he just yeah. had a stick. It's his own problem for lack of creativity, I guess. <laughs> he could have at least, like, I don't know, tied some ribbon on it or something. I mean, there's enough beads going around out there. Uh, you collect those things. I mm. know. I know. All Crazy. right. Uh, before we look ahead to the next episode we'll be discussing, let me remind everyone that the rules we just discussed are available in both poster mm -hmm. and T-shirt form. Um, and, of course, those are drawn by Eric Reichenbach. Uh, for the shirt, go to robhaswebsite.com or robhasapodcast.com and click on the merch link. Sort to see newer items first. For the poster, go to tinyurl.com slash davidrulesposter2. Yes. And if you are outside of the United States and you would like to order, just contact me through Twitter. You can DM me. 
here I am. Look at that first try. Hey, I got all right. it. So you can definitely get in touch there with me and is. I can make arrangements to get that to you. The postage will be a little bit more expensive, but we will definitely hash everything out before I ship anything out to you. So yeah. please go ahead, contact me right there okay. <laughs> and we can get you the poster. All right. So next episode. Well, we talked a lot about Parvati in this podcast. Uh, I don't remember ever saying her name this much. I know. And next week we'll be doing it again mm -hmm. uh, because as Rob announced and Mike announced, um, we'll be looking at episode 10 of Survivor Heroes versus Villains, which is another merge episode and features Parvati's double idol play. Oh, um, it's so good. It's so good. We have 10 episodes to watch before. Now I right know. Now. And listen, this is a lot. OK, this is a lot, but I'm going to power is. through. Power yes. Through. Um, so now. One other announcement before we wrap up. We want to let you know that with the Big Brother season approaching, we will be expanding the Y Blank Lost brand to include the Big Brother All-Star season. Um, we don't know yet if we will start at the first episode or not because for our Survivor Through Time schedule is going to overlap with our with the Big Brother. We don't know if we can, uh, you know, by that time, we'll be watching 12 and 13 episodes. Yeah, listen. We don't know if we'll be able to do that or we'll do one big catch-up episode or we'll just have to see how it goes. It, yeah. You know, we'll play it by ear. Maybe we both we will. have Who jobs knows? in addition to the podcasting. Yeah. So there's that family, there you know. There is that thing. <laughs> Um, Those are we'll the components we'll, of our life. We'll figure it out. Maybe the first person voted out of Big Brother will be so obvious that we won't even need to do it. Right. Um, uh, you know, if any of you are saying, wait a minute, we thought you only did Survivor. Well, mm -hmm. back in the day when I was running Reality News Online, I used to do Why Blank Lost columns for Big Brother, for American Idol, for The Apprentice. Uh, so, you know, this is nothing new to me to uh, switch into different uh, realms. Uh, you know, I used to cover everything. So, um, and now I'm just dragging Jessica into it as well. <laughs> I know. I, you, I've said this before. You're lucky I like you so much because, you know, I have more of a willingness to do this because I appreciate you. I do appreciate the fact that Wow. I just like froze. I think David is frozen too, but I'll just keep talking. Yeah. Well, I'll just <laughs> Keep so needless to say, I am happy. I will like, keep I talking. I'm happy to be part of this. And uh, I promise we will do everything we can to try to keep everything up to speed as much as we can. But yes, it's a lot. It's a lot of work, but I love doing it. So thank you, David, for letting me. Are you well, still frozen? Um. So as we wrap up, I want to encourage people to check out the RKP program. Once you join, you see that Rob does just a ton of different patron only college shows a month, uh, weekly QA show with Nicole. Uh, you know, there's some less streaming shows for the patron too. Um, and so, plus, there's the Facebook communities that you occupy with uh, a great, you know, just lots of things for people to talk about. Um, so, Remember, go to robhaswebsite.com slash patron, and once you get to Facebook groups, make sure to say hello. All right. I don't know if you heard any of that because he was very broken up, but yes, go to robhaswebsite.com and sign up for the patron groups. They are absolutely incredible. Great group of individuals that love all of the same things you love, all of the shows that you love. Unfortunately, Survivor is going to be on a bit of a pause because we are not going to be having a season this fall. However, there's a lot of other things out there. Big Brother is obviously one of those shows that is up and coming, and you will get to enjoy all of the podcasts on that and everything else that Rob podcasts on. So please become a patron. There's a lot of extra perks to do so, and you should definitely become part of the Facebook group because there are an incredible bunch of people who chat on that group about all the things that you love, and so you should definitely do that. You should also follow me on Twitter. I am at Jessica Lewis 89 and he is at David Bloomberg. Other way over here. I can't do it. <laughs> 
this backward stuff throws me off. At David Bloomberg, you should follow us both on Twitter because then you get both sides of the story. You can hear all of the wonderful things we say about each other. And uh, we do live tweet during Survivor. Unfortunately, that's not happening. I guess maybe we're going to live tweet during Big Brother? We'll see. We'll try. All right. You know. So you should follow me at Jessica Lewis 89 and he is at David Bloomberg. Yes. Now we need a hashtag and I think there's really only one hashtag that there can be. Effing stick. Effing stick. <laughs> I think that works out perfectly Effing well. Stick. So, and of course there's the hashtag for this podcast overall, why X lost. Uh, make sure you're subscribed to all of the RHAP survivor podcasts. Rob has a podcast.com slash survivor or on your favorite podcatcher. We are also on the reality TV wrap ups feed and we will continue to be on the wrap ups feed uh, even as we move into Big Brother uh, in, in a few weeks, obviously we won't be on the Survivor feed for that. You'll have to subscribe to the Big Brother feed for that. So just subscribe to everything you can related mm -hmm. to RHAP, uh, and you know you'll get all the great content, including you know the people who are moving along in this journey through time with us, like the Wiggle Room and the B and B. Yes, and uh, we just want to say thank you to Scott St. Pierre, who does all of the incredible editing on both the audio and video version of Why Blank Lost. So thank you, Scott, for all of the incredible work that you do. And thank you to Will from America for the theme song that he created for the audio version. So you should go listen to that, and then you come back. You can watch us on the video. But thank you, Will. It's a great song. It's a very catchy tune. So the, both of the individuals, Will and Scott, do great work for us. So thank you both. Yes. And thank you, Jessica, for another great week. Uh, we will see everybody next week for another blast from the past. And thank Bye. you, David. Bye. Oh, bye. <laughs> <laughs>